they've been working in conjunction with the British Arachnological Society to make a number of videos showing you how to make equipment used to catch arachnids and other invertebrates. There are many different ways to catch arachnids. In this episode, we'll give you a brief overview of the main methods, many of which you can try out yourself. So, why are we catching arachnids in the first place? Well, to identify the species, we have to get really close. And without understanding what species there are, we don't know their distribution or abundance, and how this relates to climate change and changes to the habitat. Of course, catching arachnids can be fascinating in its own right. Getting up close allows you to observe the amazing behaviour and structures of these underappreciated creatures. There are lots of different ways of sampling arachnids that live on the ground. The first and the simplest is known as grubbing about. This involves searching ground vegetation and leaf litter for invertebrates. You'll be surprised what you can spot when you get up close. Dry vegetation, leaves, moss and grass can all be shaken in a sieve. Invertebrates fall through the mesh into a white tray placed underneath. Remember to return the vegetation to where you found it. Another easy method is looking under stones, logs and other objects. Lots of spiders and other invertebrates live in damp and dark conditions. Placing a tray or sheet underneath as you lift it up means you can catch any creatures that might fall off. Remember to replace the object exactly as you found it. Pitfall trapping is very useful when you want to catch ground-dwelling species. The easiest tie to make uses disposable plastic cups or yogurt pots sunk into the ground with the rim level with the soil surface. Invertebrates that run along the surface fall in and can't escape. A good idea is to add dry moss at the bottom so that organisms can partially escape from one another. A piece of plastic or slate placed over the trap and raised up with three small stones will prevent flooding in the event of rain. It's essential to check these traps daily, and when you finish sampling, remove them. There are several ways of sampling arachnids above the ground. Beating and shaking foliage over a sheet, tray, or even an umbrella can yield good results. In a previous episode, we showed you how to make a sweep net. In a figure of eight motion, you can sweep your net through dry grass and other vegetation. After sweeping for a few minutes, you can empty your net into a plastic tray and collect any invertebrates. Another method is bark sweeping. Using a paintbrush, simply sweep the cracks in the tree's bark to dislodge any invertebrates. Using a trail sheet underneath catches any dislodged residents. Bark traps are a longer term trapping method. By placing a 20 to 30 centimeter strip of bubble wrap covered with a black bin liner around your tree, you can provide a refuge for spiders and invertebrates that travel up and down the trunk. Leave this in for a month and then carefully unwrap it over a plastic tray. Of course, if you're looking for spiders, a good place to start is looking for spider webs. It's even easier if there's been a bit of rain or moisture in the morning. If not, you can use a garden mister to spray the webs to make them more visible in dry weather. If the spider's not on the web, it may be nearby, under bark, or in a rolled up leaf. To tempt the spiders out, you can simulate insect vibrations on the web. There are several ways of doing this, including placing a maggot on the web, using a tuning fork, or even a sonic toothbrush that vibrates backwards and forwards. These can vibrate 20,000 times a minute, similar to the beating wings of a medium-sized fly. So that was a brief overview of the methods used to collect arachnids. And if you want to find out more details about the methods we featured in this video, go to the BAS website. Catch you later.